Hey everyone, my name is Biz and welcome to your second flowchart tutorial. Now in the last tutorial I had given you a simple introduction to flowcharts and I had also explained a real world example that was the fishing market problem. Now while designing the flowchart of that problem, you had seen that I had used different shapes to denote different processes but I had never told you why I did that and what are the functionalities of those shapes and in this tutorial I'll be explaining them so at first comes the start and the stop box now whenever you are starting to draw a flowchart then you need to include the start box at first it denotes the start of the problem or the flowchart I mean and when you are done with all the processes that are required in the flowchart then you again draw this box and then it will be the stop box which will denote the end of the flowchart and after this comes the input or the output box so input box means you require the user to input something right so the user will input something some data or information whatever and output box means you are displaying some data or information to the user so whenever you are doing any of those operations you use this box after this comes the process box this is this box simply is there for any kind of mathematical calculations that you will need to display in your flowchart so that's it that's the functionality of process box for any mathematical calculations then comes the condition box condition box is there to check for valid conditions like suppose if you have stored the value 2 in the variable a now you are checking that if the value of a is greater than 1 then you will jump to one part of the flowchart and if it's not then you will jump to another by jump I mean that suppose if the value of a is greater than 1 then you will display something using the output box and if the value of a is less than 1 then you will display something else using another output box so this is simply done by condition box and there are also many other applications that I will discuss later on. Then comes the arrow. These arrows are simply used to connect the different boxes starting from the start box up to the stop box. You will connect all the boxes using the arrows and also display the flow of control using that. Then comes the connector. The connector basically connects one part of the flowchart to another. Now I will come to all of these again later on. When I'll be drawing flowcharts, especially the condition box and the connector, I'll be coming to all of them. But as of right now, let's just show you two simple examples. The first one is this flowchart. So what it does, it simply displays a name. So you start, you display a name and you stop. Nothing more than that. Then after this, so this is the function of this flowchart right so I hope you get it then the next I will show you this flowchart this is basically used to display the sum of two numbers where the two numbers will be input by the user so you start and you use the process box look this process box over here this is used to initialize the variables the variable a the variable b and c so at first they are all zeros they don't contain any value and after that you write input a b so you are you want the user to give you two values which you would add and sh you will then show him the result right next you again need the process box because you are doing a process which is addition so C is equal to A plus B. It means it adds A with B and stores the result in C. And then after that, in that output box, it displays C. So that's it. That's what you needed to do, right? First, you initialize the variables. You take two data from the user. You add those data and you display the result. And then you stop. So these were two simple examples of flowcharts. So I hope you understood that. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching.
talk to you guys in the next one